In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, This is the last Sunday of 40 Days of Stewardship that you're going to be hearing a little talk of encouragement. Um, I think these talks have been so good this year, and I'm really pleased that somebody uh, recorded them. So if you missed any of them and want to be encouraged, uh, they're on the YouTube channel for St. Philip's. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but the talks were organized so that you heard from someone at different areas in their lives, different times of their lives. So there were young people who were in high school, college, just beginning their, uh, their careers, just beginning their families, and all the way through people who were um, on a fixed income after they had retired from uh, making money. Um, and I thought I would just tell you a couple of stories about how um, my move towards tithing giving to the church came about. Um, When I was in high school, I went to a church that didn't talk very much about tithing. I didn't know anything about that, didn't talk very much about giving. And so I just did what everybody else did. When the basket came by, I put a dollar in it, if I happened to have remembered a dollar that day. Um, And then I got to college, and something happened one Sunday that had a big impression on me, made a big impression on me. Uh, One of my fellow students, a a group of us, drove together to a nearby church, and a student who I didn't know very well sat next to me. Um, I knew that he was the son of missionaries, and that he also was at Amherst College on a scholarship, and he worked sometimes with me in the cafeteria washing dishes as part of work study. And so the basket came by, and I might have put a dollar in it, and then it went to him, and he put a $20 bill in the basket. And I I just was so surprised, and I spent the next few minutes calculating, thinking that that had to be at least 10% of what he was making in the cafeteria. And it just really had a big impression on me. So I graduated from college, and I was a prep school teacher, and I made $8,000 a year, which was not a whole lot of money. I had free room and board, but that was enough money to be paying back my loans. And I don't honestly remember what I did as far as tithing went at that point. And I'd like to say that it was because you're supposed to not let your right hand know what your left hand is doing, but I I think I just probably didn't give very much. Um, And then I went to medical school and spent the next few years uh, making debt rather than making money. And then I was a resident, a medical resident. Medical residents also don't get paid very much, and now I had the debt of college and the debt of med school. But Jeff and I were married, and we sat down and talked with each other, and we knew from what we learned in church that God wanted us to tithe. And so we just made a decision, a commitment, that we were going to tithe 10% of our income, and we were going to give it first before we paid our loans or our other bills that we had. And, and God has blessed that for us, and, we, and I have to say, you know, in some ways, not thinking about it is don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing, and some of it is just not forgetting, you know, that we just do it first automatically all the time. Um, and I want to say that you've heard this in maybe some of the talks already, that God doesn't need our money. You know, if he wanted to, he could do everything he needs to do for any of us himself. But he doesn't usually work that way. He doesn't usually work his miracles by himself. He did send manna from heaven, but even when he did that to feed his people, he asked them to be in a relationship with him where they trusted him and came out each day to get their daily bread. Uh, Typically, when he performed miracles, some of them in the Bible, he did himself. But typically, if he wants to heal someone, he'll do it through a doctor, through a person. He works with us. And that's how we develop our trust in him, our relationship with him, and that's how we get to be the Good Samaritans. We get to love our neighbors. Um, And so even another story that sort of had a big impact on me was thinking about how even for communion, even the, the bread and wine is not provided miraculously from heaven. God provides wheat and grapes, and human beings act on those and turn them into bread and wine and bring them into the church, and then the Holy Spirit makes those the body and blood of Christ for us in a miracle. But God wants to work with us, and he wants to use our hands in the world to help other people. 
And one of the ways he's able to do that is by us contributing to the church. So when we tithe to the church, we enable the church to be the Good Samaritan, to be the doer of God's work in the world. So I'm hoping that you guys are all encouraged, if you haven't already, to give uh, to the church. Um, I'm remembering a good friend of mine, of ours, Chris Haas, who used to give the last talk of the uh, stewardship, 40 days of stewardship, and he would, at the very end, pull out his card, his tithe pledge card, and fill it out to remind you. I think we were supposed to have them done by yesterday, and mine's not done, so I'm going to fill mine out right now. It's actually really pretty easy. You can decide how much you're going to give and per week or per month, and then do you want an envelope packet? Yes or no, and do you plan to give electronically? Yes or no. Uh, One thing that's different this year that you've all noticed is that that basket that comes by that you might have put a dollar in or you might have put your check in or your envelope in isn't being passed around. And so I want to be, uh, I want to thank Ada Germany for painting a beautiful box that's outside there that you can put your envelope into or you can do your giving electronically, as so many more of us do now. Um, So I think that's all I wanted to say, but um, let's see. Yeah, I wanted to um, also just remind you that um, there are other ways that we can give that some people have left donations for 12 baskets out in the hallway. There are opportunities to give to people each month and in the Christmas season we help to give uh, on a giving tree. So don't forget those things, but today especially if you haven't already, I hope you'll fill out your pledge card and remember to give so that we can all be God's hands helping our neighbors doing the work of God in the world. Thanks.